This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. This is a podcast of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego. To learn more about how you can support Scripps, visit us online at scripps.ucsd.edu. Like the accidental offspring of fish and seaweed, sea dragons are one of the most captivating creatures in the ocean. It was that fascination that drove Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego researchers Greg Rouse and Narita Wilson to wonder about the genetic history of sea dragon species, a subject that scientists still don't know much about. As sea dragons and seahorses take center stage at a new Birch Aquarium at Scripps exhibit this November, Rouse and Wilson are beginning to solve these biological mysteries about sea dragons, and their findings could have a big impact on their conservation. What happens with sea dragons is that their habitat, uh, where they live at near seagrass beds or kelp forests, usually close to shore, uh, means that they're often broken, their range is broken by vast stretches of beaches. And one of the things that we were wondering is because of these uh, breaks in their range, whether or not there might be uh, separate populations or separate species of each kind. So that's why we decided to sample them across their range and look at the relatedness among these populations and to see if there were any of the genetic breaks were great enough to consider them as separate species. Sea dragons are often grouped into three species, ribboned sea dragons that live in the north of Australia, and leafy and weedy sea dragons that live in the south. But DNA testing had never been used to confirm those designations, or whether the three were close relatives. It turns out that the, the, what's considered a sea dragon in the northern part of Australia, the ribbon sea dragon, is not a sea dragon at all. So it's more closely related to other pipefish species. Whereas the two in the south are actually, seem to be each other's closest relatives. So that was pretty interesting. And then when we looked at the population genetics between the other species, um, the weedy sea dragon, so the one that has quite a large range, turns out that there are two very separate um, groups, stocks, maybe species. Um, we're still analyzing some of that data, but there's two very, very distinct groups of sea dragons, and we had no idea that that was the, the case at all. To obtain tissue samples from sea dragons in their native Australian waters, the scientists worked in teams of two to spot the famously camouflaged creatures. We would find a fish and photograph it, uh, hold it up against a slate because we were interested in their, their anatomy, if that was also varying across their range. And then we would take a small little clip, a little uh, snippet of one of their appendages and put that into a, a bag and let the fish go. We basically would handle them for only about 30 seconds and then they were very um, fine with that and calm and we've since gone back and visited some of the same animals again and they're doing well. Genetic testing back in the lab revealed that leafy and weedy sea dragons are each other's closest relative. But Rouse and Wilson say their other finding about weedy sea dragons could have the most impact. Genetic information and differences in body structure suggest the weedy sea dragon should be separated into western and eastern species. Immediately this would have implications if the weedy sea dragon was, for instance, two species. The, the various states in Australia would have to reassess their legislation for protecting the animals and also the IUCN would have to consider how they would list these species. Whatever the outcome, measures must stay in place to protect these amazing animals, said the researchers. Like all coastal animals, they basically uh, suffer from us, um, our development along the coast, the amount of wastewater coming off and things like that. So making sure that you know not, not a lot of rubbish and things wash and pollutants and detergents, they're really at that interface of the water and the land. And so that's really the, the pressure point, I guess, for a lot of interaction. So really just taking care of the environment is the best thing we can do for them. Rouse and Wilson's genetic discoveries about sea dragons will be featured in Birch Aquarium at Scripps' newest exhibit, There's Something About Seahorses, opening November 14, 2009. For more information about the exhibit, visit aquarium.ucsd.edu. This has been a presentation of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego.